Good morning. I'm Brian Curtis. And I'm Doug Krisner. Here are the stories we're following today. Congressional leaders have agreed on a spending deal. We get more from Bloomberg's Dan Schwartzman. Dan. That is correct, Brian. A deal has been announced on a top-line spending level for the current fiscal year. The agreement lessening the likelihood of a partial government shutdown, which would occur on January 20th. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson and Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer negotiated the package, which now heads to the appropriations committees in both chambers to negotiate detailed spending bills that now have an overall spending limit. The cap for the 12 annual appropriations bills is $1.59 trillion. The country is facing two government shutdown deadlines One is January 19th and the other February 2nd. President Biden welcoming the news of a deal being agreed to, saying it provides a pathway to full year funding bills. Snowstorms hit the northeast portion of the country, leaving more than a foot of snow in New York's Hudson Valley while blanketing Boston and New England with heavy snow. Areas west of New York City in New Jersey got strong accumulation as well. City mostly just got hit by some rain. A second storm is now moving across the western states. Winter storm warnings and advisories being issued from Arizona all the way to Illinois, there are blizzard warnings in Colorado and New Mexico. That storm is expected to dump nine inches of snow west of Chicago starting Monday night, with parts of New York and New Jersey getting in an additional one to three inches on top of what came down today. The winter storms also, by the way, have uh, just wreaked havoc on the transportation industry. 692 flights being canceled across the country. Boston, Newark, Chicago, and Seattle were hit particularly hard. That was according to airline tracking company FlightAware. Amtrak also having to cancel some trains to Boston as well as across the Midwest. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken continuing his whirlwind tour of the Middle East with a stop off in Doha, Qatar on Sunday. Blinken warning that the Israel-Hamas conflict could easily spiral into a regional conflict. This is not just a regional issue. It's a matter of global concern. And that's certainly the case when it comes to uh, the Houthi attacks on freedom of navigation in one of the world's busiest trade corridors, the Red Sea. Blinken speaking from Qatar, which maintains ties with Hamas and has been key in hostage negotiations, which have freed more than 100 Israelis so far. Blinken earlier in the day meeting with Jordan's King Abdullah II, as well as the the foreign minister, Ayman Safadi. The secretary of state has already made stopovers in Turkey and Greece, and he is planning to visit the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the West Bank and Egypt. Some good news in London. Mayor Sadiq Khan announcing earlier this afternoon that a planned strike of the subway system had been called off. Off. The, Lund- L- the London Tube, as it's known, has more than 270 stations covering around 250 miles and accommodates around 4 million rides per day. The National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers were planning to strike over dispute over working conditions and pay. The strike was called off due to positive discussions on both sides. Global news 24 hours a day and whenever you want it with Bloomberg News Now. I'm Dan Schwartzman and this is Bloomberg. Yeah, thanks very much. Five and a half minutes here past the hour. I'm Brian Curtis, along with Doug Krisner. And Paul Allen will join us a little bit later. Let's take a look at some of the top business stories of the hour now. Airlines around the globe are pulling their Boeing, Boeing 737 MAX 9s uh, from service. It follows the Federal Aviation Administration's call to temporarily ground all 171 planes. The FAA order comes after a section of the main body on a brand new Alaska Airlines jet blew out mid flight. Bloomberg's Mary Schlangenstein says that Boeing is, is pushing to get these planes inspected and back in operation soon. They want the operators of certain of these MAX 9s to take them out of service, do the inspections, which don't take all that long. They take a number of hours to do them um, and, and to do those inspections before they fly them again, if they fall within certain inspection uh, time frames. Um, and so Alaska said they've already done quite a few of their aircraft. And, you know, it's it's not a good look for uh, any aircraft operator or manufacturer, rather, when, when you have to stop and take the planes out of service to look for some particular defect that could, you know, be a major problem if this aircraft had been higher in the air. Bloomberg's Mary Schlangenstein. The grounding is a major setback for Boeing. The company has grappled with manufacturing defects and costly repairs in recent years. Most recently, the FAA said that it is monitoring some inspections of Boeing airplanes to look for a possible loose bolt in the rudder control system. And coming up in a few moments, we'll be chatting with Julie Johnson, who is Bloomberg's senior aerospace reporter on the latest from Boeing. Doug? 
Elon Musk's drug use is reportedly causing worry among executives and board members at the companies led by Musk. The story from Bloomberg's Denise Pellegrini. Wall Street Journal reporting Musk has used LSD, cocaine, ecstasy, and psychedelic mushrooms often at private parties. And people close to the Tesla and SpaceX CEO tell the journal his drug use is ongoing. In particular, he's consuming ketamine. Musk said in August he had a prescription to use a drug as an antidepressant. And after Musk puffed on a blunt containing marijuana on Joe Rogan's podcast in 2018, the Pentagon reviewed the federal security clearance tied to Musk's role as CEO of Space Exploration Technology which is certified to launch military spy satellites. Musk didn't respond to a request for comment from Bloomberg News to this story, but Alex Spiro, an attorney for the billionaire, told the journal his client is regularly and randomly drug tested at SpaceX and has never failed a test. Denise Pellegrini, Bloomberg Radio. In the latest U.S. jobs report, we saw gains in jobs and wage increases, and both exceeded expectations. But as Doug pointed out earlier, a number of caveats, we'll get to that a bit later, U.S. payrolls rose by 216,000. Randy Krosner is professor of economics at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. He tells us what these numbers might mean to Fed policymakers. I think the Fed focuses a lot on uh, wage growth, and we've seen uh, wage growth above expectations. I think it's really clear that the Fed is going to be waiting um, a while before it starts cutting rates uh, because uh, the labor market is still quite strong. The uh, wage growth is still quite strong. And um, wages are the key thing that then feed into services as well as uh, manufacturing inflation. Randy Krosner there. In the coming week, the Fed will have some key economic data to analyze. We'll be getting a big report on consumer prices on Thursday and then producer prices on Friday. China has sanctioned five U.S. defense firms in response to deals for arms sales to Taiwan. We have more from Bloomberg's Yvonne Mann in Hong Kong. The Chinese foreign ministry says the sanctions are a result of what it calls gravely wrong actions taken by the U.S. The companies affected include BAE Systems Land and Armament, Alliant Tech Systems Operation, Aerovironment, Viasat, and Data Link Solutions. The decision is seen as the latest retaliation to U.S. military sales to Taiwan. The latest arms deal amounted to about $300 million. China responded immediately by intensifying military training around the Taiwan Strait. These new sanctions freeze the five companies' properties in China, and entities there are banned from any transactions with those firms. In Hong Kong, I'm Yvonne Mann, Bloomberg Radio. Saudi Arabia will cut crude prices in all regions, including its main Asia market. Bloomberg's Joanne Wong has more on that. The cuts will begin next month amid persistent weakness in the market. Cuts in supply by OPEC Plus are another part of the story. The cuts are aimed at preventing a buildup of oil in storage. Saudi Arabia is taking on the bulk of the burden. It has set voluntary cuts of 2 million barrels a day through the first quarter. It's hoped that that will offset otherwise strong global supply that is hurting prices. That may push the OPEC Plus group to extend output cuts into this year. In Hong Kong, I'm Wen Wong, Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Asia. I'm Brian Curtis, along with Paul Allen in Sydney. Well, our top story, Boeing this morning, the FAA ordering the grounding of some 171 planes in the States. And Global Airlines have taken many of the 737 MAX 9 jets out of service as well. Joining us now is Julie Johnson, Bloomberg Senior Aerospace Reporter, with more on this. So I guess the basic question is, Julie, Uh, What does this say about Boeing's manufacturing standards and controls? Well, you know, this just has to be very dismaying uh, for people at Boeing. Uh, The the company, you know, the company, once again, is under immense scrutiny and, um, and, you know, just just a blizzard of really bad headlines and just a, you know, a lot of reputational damage to them from this incident. In fact, that's probably going to be um, what lingers more so than the grounding, but we'll see on that. But anyway, Boeing's put just put a, a huge effort into improving quality and safety. They, they had definitely uh, seemed to be making progress, and that was one reason why, you know, their shares shot up more than 40% um, uh, through Friday from the, the the end of October, you know, Wall Street was starting to buy the story. And then 
Uh, and then you have another very scary incident involving a MAX that points to a manufacturing flaw, most likely. And it's, it's just deja vu all over again. Yeah, you say most likely a manufacturing flaw. I mean, the investigation's still underway. But why is it that we seem to be leaning that way at the moment? Well, this design um, has been used by Boeing um, in across uh, the previous generation, or I guess more selectively, but it was in a previous generation of Max. The design's been in place since uh, around 2006 without any incident. And it was um, so, so this, you know, analysts are thinking this is probably um, a one-off incident and um, and it's interesting. I don't know if we want to get into the an explanation of the the door plug um, uh, feature on the Max Nine, which is now being scrutinized um, by the FAA, and and you know it's at the brunt of these inspections. But the um, the Alaska Airline jet had two of these um, they're cutouts for for emergency exits if airlines want to put them in um, their Alaska used what's called a plug in the fuselage to cover um, the exits it didn't need them for the configuration that it flies so anyway there are two of these um, behind the wing one blew out the other was fine and um, Friday night. And so it's m- more than likely, you know, a bolt failure or, um, or, or you know, who knows. Uh, but it, it's looking like um, a manufacturing issue. Only two U.S. airlines operate this 737 model. I mean, it's, it's still said to be a popular plane, and we mentioned that uh, other global airlines uh, are affected. Uh, you wonder if, since it's only two U.S. airlines and since it was only this one incident, whether there is the uh, strong possibility that this passes quickly, uh, that, that they get a handle on this. Um, are, are you seeing and hearing much about that? Well, you know, again, it's early days, and... Um and the, so, you know, we'll see what the NTSB and the FAA find. And Boeing's part of this as well, um, as, they do, as they do their inspection. The I mean, it's the- probably not a fair comparison, but we see, uh, we see car recalls all the time. Yet the standards for air flight and for driving um, need to be very different. Maybe you can just uh, flesh that out a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, the... If you're at altitude, you know, if you're climbing in an airplane, it's just a very unforgiving environment if something fails. Um, and so I think the, the, the standards for safety are just so much higher uh, for, you know, for aircraft than automobiles, for example, just, just for that very reason. Um, well, the- and just back to your earlier, you know, this is the MAX 9 is the, the lowest selling of the, the family um, so from that perspective, and it's January when U.S. airlines um, have generally fairly light flying schedules. So this is, I think those are, those are the two reasons why people are thinking this probably is going to be relatively minor uh, in terms of impact to the industry but, um, and financial impact. But the re- reputational hit for Boeing just really is, is bad. Yeah, and there have been a number of other smaller manufacturing issues as well that we've heard about. Nothing as dramatic as a door plug blowing out in midair, but misaligned holes, uh, a loose rudder bolt. Uh, what is going on at Boeing? Is there an underlying cause to what's, uh, to these sorts of manufacturing defects? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and we could, I could spend the next hour talking about this because it's fascinating and it's really complicated. And um, it, both Boeing and Airbus have really struggled to recover from from COVID, um, and when they had you know, Boeing stopped work on its 737 uh, for a few months, and while Airbus slowed its rate down, um, Boeing was also dealing with the Max grounding at the same time. But um, recovering has just been incredibly difficult, and yeah. a lot of it has to do with. Uh, for Boeing, especially really skilled people who just 
um, you know, when uh, the buyouts came in 2020, they they just said, "I've had enough. No more, no no more, you know, turbulence and job insecurity. I'm 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 going to retire." And um, so, replacing that generation of workers, especially in aerospace has been a problem. Julie, thanks so much for joining us. We know that Chinese regulators are taking a close look at this, too. We had an emergency meeting that was called that sources are telling us about. No no direct action yet, but we'll we'll be watching that. Julie Johnson has been with us, Bloomberg Senior Aerospace Reporter. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Asia, your morning brief on the stories making news from Hong Kong to Singapore and Wall Street. Look for us on your podcast feed every day on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcast. You can also listen live each day on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say, Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Brian Curtis. And I'm Doug Krisner. Join us again tomorrow for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak Asia.